Hi everyone. My name is Nathan Landau and I'm a messaging strategist with Conveyor. We are a strategic communications and marketing firm located in Portland, Oregon, and our mission is better storytelling for better brands. Foundational to that work is the work that we do in messaging, which is what I'm going to be talking about today. When we talk about messaging, at Conveyor, we like to reference our two favorite authors on the content strategy subject, Christina Halverson and Melissa Ratch, who say that messaging is the art of deciding what information or ideas you want to give to and get from your users. This is a really big concept, though, so in order to make this more useful for ourselves at Conveyor and for our customers, we've broken this down into a set of tools that we call a messaging platform. A messaging platform is a system for internal and external alignment of who you are, what you say, how you say it, and who you're addressing. Each of these is supported by a set of tools that facilitate these processes. Who you are as a business is defined by your core messaging, your mission, vision, and values. What you say as a business can be defined by your messaging architecture, a prioritized list of your messages from most to least relevant or applicable for a given situation. This can be particularly useful for large-scale content projects like websites, brochures, but is also useful for producing ads or social content. How you say it is a messaging guide. This is broken down into your brand voice, your brand tone, and your brand style. This ensures that the way that you sound as a business is consistent across platforms and also allows you to strategically shift how that voice sounds depending on who you're talking to and when. It also helps solve arguments about things like parentheses and Oxford commas. And lastly, who you're addressing are buyer personas. These are fictional constructions of your audience that define their pain points, their likes, their dislikes, that allow you to strategically align the messaging work that you've done through the platform to each person as accurately as possible. Today we're going to be talking about core messaging. Core messaging is who you are as a business, and it's broken down into three primary aspects. Your mission, vision, and values. Your mission as a business is why your company exists. It's the reason you get out of bed every morning and the reason you come to work every day. Your vision is the goal that you want to create or become with that business. And ideally, your vision is the result of acting on and fulfilling that mission. Your values are what you believe and encourage. They are the guidelines by which you operate as a company and they should drive decisions at every level. Core messaging supports just about everything that you do as a business, from social media to customer communications. That's because your mission, vision, and values, who you are as a business, should be conveyed in everything that you do. So why does it matter, aside from being the underpinning of just about everything that you do as a business? Well, core messaging has two really concrete benefits. The first is defining. Defining your mission, vision, and values can be a really useful process, particularly for small or medium businesses. Many businesses may have some variation of a mission statement, say, laying around in their founding documents or in a dusty corner of their website, but taking the time to define these aspects of your business can be deeply valuable for your strategy and your ongoing growth. Additionally, Defining your core messaging allows you to establish alignment. When you know your mission, vision, and values, you can start to act on them knowingly and mindfully, ensuring that your business as it grows is aligned well with the kinds of things that you believe and the way that you want to work. Core messaging delivers consistency, direction, and drive over the course of your growth, and it also avoids muddy, aimless, or reactive marketing. Lots of us have seen businesses going after the latest social trends or the newest media platform, but never really getting very far in any of them. This might be because a lot of the work that they're doing may not actually align with who they are as a company. Let's take a closer look at mission. 
Your mission is why you get out of bed in the morning. I know that some days it's really difficult to get out of bed as is, so a mission ought to be pretty inspirational. However, as a business, you'll also be talking a lot about who you are and what you do, and so your mission should be accessible and memorable as well. Lastly, your mission should be unifying. It should be something that you, as a business owner, can get behind, as well as the people who work with you, the people you employ, and the people you collaborate with. Let's look at an example. This is a mission statement from Apple. Apple designs Macs, the best personal computers in the world, along with OS X, iLife, iWork, and professional software. Apple leads the digital music revolution with its iPods and iTunes online store. Apple has reinvented the mobile phone with its revolutionary iPhone and App Store and is defining the future of mobile media and computing devices with iPad. As a mission statement, this may feel like it falls a little flat. It's not all that memorable, it's not particularly unifying, and it's not very inspirational. An interesting point of contrast is that this is Apple's mission statement nearer its founding and for a large part of its growth. To make a contribution to the world by making tools for the mind that advance humankind. Now that's accessible, that's inspirational, that's memorable, and it's something that can unify a business. And it did. That's the kind of mission that we can get behind. Let's look at a couple of other examples. To be the Earth's most customer-centric company where people can find and discover anything they want to buy online. If you guessed Amazon, right on. To organize the world's information and make it universally accessible and useful. That's Google. To bring inspiration and innovation to every athlete in the world, with the caveat that if you have a body, you are an athlete. That's Nike. The last one's a little bit of a curveball. To become the world's leading provider of premium products and premium services for individual mobility. Give up? That's the BMW group. What all of these missions have in common is that they're accessible, inspirational, and can be aligned. They allow employees, collaborators, clients to believe in and back up this mission toward that company's growth. As you're trying to make your mission, here are a couple of tips. First, answer the basics. What do we do? Who do we serve? And what value do we bring? It's important to note that the missions that we just looked at as examples, they don't necessarily elaborate on all of these, but I guarantee that's where the conversation started. If you're not aligned on the essentials of the value of your business and your audience and your action, then chances are your mission is not going to accurately reflect what you do. Next, acknowledge past work, but don't rely on it. As I said earlier, chances are a small or medium business has some semblance of a mission statement laying around. That's a great place to start. Acknowledging that past work can be a really valuable first step toward defining and aligning your new mission, but you don't have to rely on the work that you've done. Chances are your business has grown since that first mission statement was written. As you're going through this process, clarify your objective. Now is a really good time to remember accessible, memorable, unifying. As you're developing this, watch for jargon. Particularly if you are a sole business owner or you're working with a small leadership team, it's important to make sure that your mission does not necessarily include language that could distance or confuse people. As a small or medium business, you're probably going to be talking about your business a lot in conversation, and if your mission statement includes language that doesn't necessarily connect, it may not be as strong as it could be. And in that vein, simplify. Simplifying applies to every step of the core messaging process, 
but particularly when it comes to mission statements. Let's take a look at vision. It's important to remember that vision, ideally, is the result of fulfilling your mission. Your vision is the long-term goal for your business, and as such, it should be aspirational. It should act as a north star that your business can strive for. It should be results-oriented, and it should allow you and your employees to be driven toward making it happen. Let's take a look at another example. We believe that we are on the face of the earth to make great products, and that's not changing. We are constantly focusing on innovating. We believe in the simple, not the complex. We believe that we need to own and control the primary technologies behind the products that we make and participate only in markets where we can make a significant contribution. We believe in saying no to thousands of projects so that we can really focus on the few that are truly important and meaningful to us. We believe in deep collaboration and cross-pollination of our groups, which allow us to innovate in a way that others cannot. And frankly, we don't settle for anything less than excellence in every group of the company, and we have the self-honesty to admit when we're wrong and the courage to change. This is Apple's vision statement, circa 2017. And while it may be a North Star, there are some aspects of this that might not connect with you and certainly didn't connect with us. It's lengthy, it's complicated, it's not easy to talk about or reference. A North Star conveys the idea that it is a singular thing that you are working toward, and this, maybe we could consider it a constellation instead. Here are a couple of other examples. Whose vision statement is to make people happy? That's Disney. A world where everyone has a decent place to live. Habitat for Humanity. To become the Harvard of the West. That's Stanford. And this is one of our favorite examples because it really clearly illustrates the interaction between a mission the reason this business exists, gets out of bed every morning, and their vision, the result of fulfilling the mission that they work on every day. That's the American Cancer Society. When you're looking to define your vision, there are a couple of important questions that you can ask yourself. And two big ones get at the question from two different angles. The first is, what do you want to create with your business? bigger than just sales or revenue or growth, asking yourself what you want to create on a larger scale can help you align with a larger goal. Similarly, if your business fulfills its mission, what's the result? Taking a look at what you're doing today and envisioning what that results in in the future can be a really great way to look down the line and develop a mission that truly reflects the work that you do. As you go through this process, think big, get aspirational, and look to the horizon. Consider that your vision doesn't have to be something that your business can achieve within its lifespan. The vision that you choose for your business may very well be a part of the legacy that you are defining and establishing by doing the work that you do. Lastly, we're going to talk about values. Values are probably the most personal aspect of core messaging, and there's no real right or wrong way to do them, as long as they truly reflect the way that you run your business. Done well, a set of core values can become a filter for partnership with the people that you work with. It can become a, a lens through which you view performance. It provides a common direction for you and your employees, and is the bedrock of the culture that you build as a business. When we talk about values at Conveyor, we always come back to this quote. When properly practiced, values inflict pain. They make some employees feel like outcasts. They limit an organization's strategic and operational freedom and constrain the behavior of its people. They leave executives open to heavy criticism for even minor violations, and they demand constant vigilance.
While this may be phrased a little strongly, I know that I have certainly felt this kind of tension. And that is the power of values. They allow for accountability at every level of your business and encourage alignment at every level. We've incorporated a couple of local Portland examples to take a look at our values. The first is elemental technologies. This is one of my favorite examples because it really showcases the breadth that businesses can establish their values. Elemental has 14 core values and they also come in different forms. Some of these are imperative statements like invent and simplify or be right a lot. Others are nouns like frugality and ownership and customer obsession. To contrast with this, Gray boxes values, there are three of them. Each of them is accompanied by a sentence or two of copy that elaborates on and establishes exactly what these statements mean. And looking at these two side by side really highlights the breadth of ways that your values can come to life. When you're developing your values as a company, make sure to ask everyone. Mission and vision those can probably be defined by a sole proprietor or a, a relatively small senior leadership team. But values are a reflection not just of what you believe as a business owner, but also what the people you hire believe and the people you work with, the people that you partner with. Bringing these people to the table can be a really important part of getting a better and broader understanding of the values that your company represents. Additionally, as you're asking questions, it's important to ask things not just like, what do you think our values are, but what do we excel at as a business? Why do you choose to work with us? What keeps you here or drew you here as an employee? As you're asking these questions, write down everything. Consider it a brainstorm. When we facilitate this workshop at Conveyor, often we'll get duplicate answers. And in fact, we love getting duplicate answers. We'll write those down because that means that that was an idea important enough to be mentioned more than once. As you're writing these things down, start collecting them into loose groups. Sometimes this happens organically. Other times you'll need to jot things down on post-it notes and rearrange them until they start to collectively resemble some higher ideas. As these collections start to form, maybe they'll reveal a core idea naturally. Otherwise, you may need to group these together and develop highlights or themes. And lastly, be bracingly honest. 55 of the Fortune 100 companies list integrity as a core value. And while single word values are not a bad thing by any means, integrity lacks a certain substance. I'm going to go back a couple of slides here to look at gray box. Masters making magic. Our collective is made of masters who dominate their field. Graybox assembles an agile team suited to your situation. We won't deal in mediocrity. Now this conveys integrity. It also conveys expertise and customer service. And this is an important thing to keep in mind. Even if you land on single word terms as you're grouping your results together, Think of ways that you can elaborate or describe these terms in a way that truly reflects how those values come to life in your organization. Mission, vision, values. We want to provide an example of what these look like as a cohesive whole. And this example is Automation Resources Group. They're a client of conveyors who we worked with a number of years ago and facilitated a core messaging workshop. The results are Awesome. Automation Resources Group's mission is to inspire and enable innovators to create revolutionary machines. Their vision is a better world served by better machines. And their values are revolutionary improvement, trust in collaboration, no assholes, engineer your lifestyle, explore and discover, think critically, and minimum viable bureaucracy. These are values that ARG believed in so wholly that they put them on the walls of their office spaces. A giant mural runs the length of their warehouse 
illustrating each and every one of these values so that every time a new customer, a new client, a new collaborator, a new employee comes in, they know exactly what this business stands for. Collectively, this core messaging work also resulted in a wonderful website for Automation Resources Group that truly reflects who they are as a business and a brand. So to recap, externally, core messaging can help you establish more effective marketing, more targeted campaigns, and a much more cohesive brand that truly reflects the ideals that you maintain as a business. Internally, it allows for more effective internal communications. It's the bedrock of your culture. It creates a filter for hiring and allows a yardstick for performance. Now, with your mission, vision, and values in place, you can return to something like a messaging platform and take some next steps. Once you know who you are, you could think about what you say, or how you say it, or who you're addressing. You can consider the messaging platform as a fully stocked toolbox. If you have every one of these tools, chances are you're prepared for just about anything. But even if you have just a few of them, let's say your hammer, a screwdriver, a wrench, in the form of a well-established, defined, and aligning mission, vision, and values, you are still well-equipped to take on lots and lots of growth and to keep building starting today. Stay super, and thanks a lot.